For the past two weeks, I've been here in steamy Wichita, Kansas, working on a couple of buses and even an ambulance, roughing in some off-grid solar electrical systems. And while I was working on those, I got to thinking, hey, maybe the viewers back at home would like to see how this system in particular, and this 40-foot Bluebird All-American, is coming together to give the people who will call this home off-grid air conditioning with a dual zone, multi-head, mini split system. It's got one outdoor section, two indoor sections, each capable of 12,000 BTU of cooling power, which is what you need in a rig this size. But the only drawback for those systems has always been that you need 220 volt AC power to do that. And most inverters on the market today are 120 or 220 only. And this bus, well, it's gonna have 220, 120, and they want the ability to plug it into 120 shore power and not be stuck looking for 220 shore power. I know that's a lot of mumbo jumbo, complicated stuff, but we're gonna get into it and explain it all. And I'm gonna share with you how this amazing off-grid electrical system can do the impossible, supply all the voltages you want, all the runtime you need to keep this bus cool, your loads powered, and your life worry-free while you're off-grid in the middle of summer. My name's Chuck Cassidy. Come with me as I show you this impossible electric system and just what it's capable of and how it came together. Dual zone, two head, one outdoor unit, 220 volt multi. <laughs> For real this time. Now it doesn't matter how much spray foam you pack in the walls and how many of those pesky school bus windows you delete. Cooling a 40 foot school bus is no small job. And that's why we decided on running a dual zone mini split system for this 40 foot Bluebird. A dual zone system gives you two heads to use to distribute the cold air throughout the bus. We'll have a 12,000 BT unit up front, a 12,000 unit in the back, and those two can be controlled independently and tied together into one central outdoor unit to deliver 24,000 BTU of cooling capacity to this rig, which should be awesome for a 40-foot Bluebird. The cool thing is when you're not in the front, you can shut that one down. And when you're not in the bedroom, you can shut that one down. So you get a little bit of added versatility and flexibility to the system. Of course, the drawback is that this system requires 220 volts of AC power to run. And that can be tricky, especially when that has to come from an inverter. Let me show you how we did that. But first, let's talk about the shore power connection because that's where the magic starts. I know what you're thinking, Chuck, we're talking off grid. Why are we starting this conversation at the shore power inlet? Well, that's because that's where the design of this system really originated. Now the clients who own this bus, they want the ability to have 220 volts of AC power for running their mini split and maybe whatever else they might use. They have also the knowledge that when they do stop somewhere to plug in, they're not always gonna have 220 volt AC power. I know in my travels, I never had 220 volt AC power to plug into. Most of the time, it was just a standard 15 amp receptacle, like the kind you'd see in the wall across the room from where you're sitting. Because they wanted the ability to charge with just 120 volt AC but output 220 volt AC in their system we had to come up with an innovative solution and that was create a dual inverter system using two 120 volt Victron inverters connected in series synchronized to give us our 220 volt AC connecting only one of them to the shore power plug and that's able to take 120 volts send it in distribute it out and change it into 220 volts to run the mini split I know it's complicated I know it sounds like magic and it is, but we're gonna try and explain it as we go. Now let's pick up this discussion where we were just talking with inverters. And we'll start with a brief history of inverters to make it clear why this system is so special. Like I was saying before, we need 220 volt AC power to run the mini split. Well, in the past, inverter chargers like this that are designed to accept shore power and then output power into your system, they would only be compatible with the voltage coming in on shore power if it matched the voltage coming out that they produced. So a 220 volt producing inverter, if you plug it into shore power, it would only work if you saw 220 volt shore power. Well, we all know how rare that is. And so we came up with a system that gives us our 220 volt AC power and it can connect to 120 volt AC shore power inlet. And it starts by running a dual inverter based system. 220 volt AC power is actually just two legs of 110 or 115 or 120 volt AC power that combine in the breaker panel to give you the 220. What we have here on the first inverter, we have our output, that's a thick wire. And then here we have our shore power connection coming in. That shore power is 120 volts AC. 
and this inverter takes that AC power, it sends it straight through to the loads, and then whatever's left over it uses to charge the batteries. The batteries then are powering the second inverter, which because of this communication cable is staying in perfect sync with its neighbor, and it then uses the battery power, which is coming from the charging output of the first inverter, to supply the other leg of 120 volt AC power that is combined at the breaker box to give us 220 volts. 220 volt AC is just two legs of 120. These inverters each produce one of those legs. They arrive at the breaker panel together and a tandem or a dual pole breaker takes that and creates our 220 volt circuit that runs the mini split. It sounds complicated, but this is a very simple and elegant way of getting 120 volt shore power capabilities with 220 volt output capabilities all in one system. It's very easy to do. Victron keeps it simple. All you have to do is use one ethernet cable to connect these two boxes together. You use their programming app. It steps, it step by step takes you through the process. And in about 10 minutes, these are synchronized, talking to each other, producing 220 volts split phase AC power. This is our AC main breaker panel and hopefully this will help kind of clear things up for you. These two thick bundles of eight gauge wire coming in represent the output from each inverter. Now they come in, we bring our neutrals to the same bar because, well, they are the same. And then each leg comes down and connects through our main 50 amp breaker. We got the black one here from our front inverter and the red one from our rear inverter. And that combines and now we've got a 220 volt system coming together at this 50 amp breaker. That supplies power to this 20 amp dual pole breaker and that's our 220 volt supply to the mini split. And then next to that you can see just regular old 120 volt single pole breakers for the rest of the circuits in the bus. It comes together just like a standard box you would see. The main difference between this and what you might find in a home is that we actually have two grounds, one for each inverter, and two neutrals, one from each inverter, coming together on this bar. Now that I've bored you with all those technical discussions of voltages and split phases, let's get into the more delightful magic of our solar system. So on the roof of this bus, we've got 3,200 watts of photovoltaic cells coming into two separate but identical charge controllers. We're running the smart solars from Victron. These are MPPT 15070s. That means they can output up to 70 amps of charging at 24 volts, which is the voltage of our battery system. Those come in through this PV DC isolator. These are nice to have. Now, although we do have combiner boxes with breakers on the roof, if you want to quickly shut off the power coming in from your solar panels, maybe to service something, or if there's an emergency, it's just as easy as turning this knob, and you can actually even lock it out. It's kind of a nice feature. From there, the power comes in to our Lynx distributor. Now, because we have two inverters and two charge controllers, in addition to a bunch of other DC circuits, we actually have two Lynx distributors running in series here. Everything comes together. We've got our fuses and overcurrent protection. And if you want to know more about how these systems work, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's going to be a whole series of videos coming from yours truly in the coming months detailing how these systems work, how they come together, and how you can design them for your own rig. Coming out of that, because we have to keep track of how many amps are going into and out of our batteries, we've installed a Victron Smart Shunt here. And because, of course, we need the ability to turn this whole system off, we've got our main master disconnect below that. The Smart Shunt is sending information to the Serbo GX along with our charge controllers and our inverters to power this really awesome touchscreen. This is a Victron Touch 50. And if you look at it, it can tell you what's happening with your PV, so how many watts you're bringing in from your charge controllers. It'll tell you not only what your inverters are doing, but what each inverter is doing on its own. It can tell you what you're pulling from the grid, the percentage of your battery, what's happening at your battery, whether it's being charged or discharged, which can sometimes be difficult to figure out if you've got a lot of sun coming in, but a lot of loads running. And it will also tell you what's happening on your DC power system. So, you know, all of our DC lights and pumps and things like that, we'll know exactly how much energy that is using as well. It's a really great way for someone who's maybe a novice or you know, not so mechanically or electrically inclined to still grasp what's happening in their electrical system. Back on this side, we have a DC to DC charger. Nothing too special about that, but that's good for up to 900 watts of alternator charging. And below this, we have a really great battery bank. I wanna tell you more about it. Now these batteries are awesome and they're pretty much all I've been installing in the off-grid systems that I get to design and install on my own. These are life power batteries from Signature Solar. They are lithium iron phosphate batteries in the server rack format. And I like them for a lot of reasons. Let me tell you all of them. 
The first one is the price. For the amount of energy storage you get per dollar in this, these are 2.8 times more effective ways to spend your money than Battleborn batteries. That's right, 2.8 times. For every dollar you spend on one of these batteries, you get 2.8 times the storage capacity than you would if you took those dollars and handed them to Battleborn. It's something to consider. I also love the form factor. This is a standardized form factor and Signature Solar is not the only company producing server rack size style batteries out there. These could be swapped out for batteries from SOK and lots of other companies should the need ever arise, but that's not gonna happen because of another thing I love about these, which is their chemistry. They're lithium iron phosphate. That means these are good for easy three to 4,000 full depth of discharge cycles before they drop below 80% of their usable capacity. That represents somewhere between 10 and 20 years of full-time everyday off-grid use, which just isn't gonna happen for most of us. In fact, this system is gonna spend the majority of its life operating on the above 50% depth of discharge zone. Other things I like about these batteries is they have built-in breakers on each battery, which is really nice. That protects the cables coming out of it. In addition to all of the typical BMS functions, we have over temperature, under temperature, over current, over voltage, and under voltage protection all built in. The BMS can actually be communicated to with these ethernet ports on the front. And you even get a readout on the front indicating the approximate state of charge and what mode the BMS is in, whether it's alarm or just this typical run mode. Now looking at these, you might be thinking, Chuck, you usually make things that look so pretty. What's up with all of the different lengths of battery cables here? And there's a very good reason for that. When you connect multiple batteries together in parallel, it's imperative that the path that the electrons have to flow through to reach their load or for the charge to come into the batteries be the same for each battery. If you have differences in that path, over time that can mean that certain batteries bear more of the loads and get more of the charge than other batteries, which will cause uneven wear and potentially create batteries that will age out before the other batteries around them. The best way to avoid that is to use a bus bar based battery combiner system, which is what the Lynx Power In is. That's what's mounted up here. And the best way for that to work is if every battery has the same length of cable attached to it. So what we did is we measured the longest length, which is from the bat bottom battery up to the power in, and then we created three more sets of those cables and just let the slack be danged. We dressed it up as nice as we could. And while it's not the prettiest, it's the configuration that is gonna give these batteries the longest life possible. And since these are the single most expensive part of this off-grid solar system, we wanna do what we can to protect them. And that's just what we did here. My favorite part of any solar system has to be the panels themselves. And I'm a big fan of these Q-cells that we just found for this project. They're all black with black anodized frames and we found black mounting hardware. Well, And each one of them is 400 watts. We've got eight for a total of 3,200 watts mounted here on the roof. And these cells are actually slightly shorter than your typical residential panel. So they don't overhang quite as far and they're a little less obtrusive to the aesthetics of a beautiful school bus like this one. They're split into two separate combiner boxes. Each combiner box has four panels assigned to it and each combiner box then feeds into its own charge controller. The combiner boxes have overcurrent protection for each string of panels in addition to lightning protection in the event this bus ever gets struck by lightning and we'll see if that ever happens. Well, it takes a lot of magic if you want to run an off-grid solar powered air conditioning system with the dual zone mini split, but that's magic that's within our grasp, my friends. And this bus has just that system. I know the video this week was complicated and probably went over some of your heads. I think I went over my head a few times even, but I just want your takeaway to be that this type of system exists. You can use it to meet unreasonable loads reasonably. And if you're prepared to spend the money, like this system has close to $20,000 worth of components in it, you can build something that really transforms your bus from not just an ordinary off-grid RV, but into a mobile power plant. It's really exciting. Well, my name's Chuck Cassidy. Thanks for tuning in this week. We got technical. It's one of my favorite things to do. And there's plenty more of this coming. If you're into solar powered stuff, if you're into school buses, or maybe you're just into me, in which case I'm very sorry. Stick around, subscribe. We'll see you next time. <laughs>